this video we'll talk about solving polynomial and rational inequalities. We want to solve these polynomial inequalities. We've looked at absolute value, we've looked at quadratics. The absolute values we were allowed to do it symbolically. But when we started with quadratic, then we needed to use it either graphically or do some kind of testing because we're going to have boundary points that will give us these intervals of values that could be true or false. So we want to take this problem and it asks us to factor it, and I'm going to factor it using synthetic division. We've been talking about that in this chapter, so we might as well use it. I'm looking at negative 12 to help me figure out what to try, because I know 1 or negative 1 doesn't work, so I want to try negative 2. And I put my negative 2 there, and I put in all my coefficients, and I'm ready to go. So when I bring down the 1 and multiply, and then add, and then I multiply, and I add, and I multiply, and I add, and thankfully I get a zero down here, so I know that this is one of my zeros. So I can even put it over here on my graph. And then I can take this, and I know that it's, remember, constant x and x squared. So x squared minus x minus 6, and I want to factor that. And I could take my quadratic formula, my calculator, or this is simple enough because it's just an x squared. So I'm going to take x and x and minus 3 and plus 2. That'll add up to negative 1. So this tells me if I set it equal to 0 that I have a 0 at positive 3 and a 0 at negative 2, which means I have 2 here. Okay, so when I factor this polynomial up here, it's actually x minus 3, x plus 2, quantity squared because one of the the second factor was what I divided by. Now we know that we have these two zeros and we need to figure out what happens between those things and we also need to think about that it's going to be in our case brackets so that will help me out knowing how to write my final answer. So I have over here from negative infinity to negative 2 and then I have from negative 2 over to positive 3, and I also have from positive 3 to positive infinity. And I want to know what happens in all those regions. So I'm coming over here to my calculator, and y1 is where this polynomial is, and I want to look at something uh, smaller than negative 2. So over here it's got a negative value, and if I look in between the two, and I look at like 0, I see that it also has a negative value. Here's my negative, there's my 0, and then until I get to the next zero, it's still a negative value. And then if I look at 3, I need to look beyond 3, and I see that those are all positive. Now if I look at, it says over here to determine the end behaviors, this is a positive cubic graph, so it should be a down up, starts down and it ends up. And I want to talk about the multiplicities. We had a multiplicity of 2 over here at negative 2, and that is why over here we started negative, because that's the way the graph's supposed to be. But then at that 2, it had to bounce, so it stayed negative, and this isn't a perfect graph, but then it did something to the come through this one and then end up positive. So this is just a guess of my graph, but I can see now if I'm looking graphically that sure enough below the x-axis is from negative infinity to 3, and then above it will be from 3 to positive infinity. We want greater than 0, so that means we want this over here. So our answer is going to be x is an element of 3 including to infinity. And if we come over here and look at the actual graph, if we graph it, we see that, sure enough, it's below everywhere until we get to that 3, and then it's above, just like we thought. Not exactly the same graph we graphed, but we can see the shape is about right. All right, so now we want to solve this inequality using the table, which is basically what we did, but we kind of did a combination of both. So we need to get this to be 0 on one side and everything else on the other side, so bring over my 5x squared and my 2x, and then I have my plus 8, less than or equal to 0. I was just adding and subtracting across the equal sign, so I didn't have to change the inequality. And this one, we need to figure out what our zeros are, and we could do it a couple ways. We could do synthetic division. We could try to see if we could factor it some other way. Or my y2 here is where my I have my zeros, and I see that I have a 0 at negative 1, and I have another 0 at x equal 4, and remember I need four of them, I mean three of them, so I need to go, and I missed one. Here's the other one, over here at 2 equals 0, or x equal 2. So all of those were found pretty quickly. I found three, I didn't have to worry about multiplicities because I found three. So that makes my intervals, this is my smallest value here at negative 1, so I'm going to go from negative infinity to negative 1, 
and it will be including the negative one because of my inequality. And I'm going to go then, the next smallest one would be 2. So I'm going to start at that negative 1 and go over to 2 and include it. And then I will go from 2 to 4. Those should be all the values I need. So a test value that's smaller than negative 1, I'll try negative 2. And then I'll go look at my table to figure it out instead of plugging and chugging. From negative 1 to 2, I can see a 0 happens in there. So I'm going to try 0. And between 2 and 4, well, that would be 3. And actually, I should do from 4 to infinity. I forgot about that one. And so I'll try 5. So negative 2, if I go up one more, remember I'm in this y2 column. And at negative 2, I have negative 24. So I have a negative. And my inequality says less than or equal to 0. So yes, this one works. And when I put in 0, I go over here and I see that I have a positive 8. So that gives me something that I don't want. Between 2 and 4, I tried 3, and that gives me a negative value. So I want that one as well. And then if I go down a little bit farther to 5, then I see that I have a positive again, which again I don't want. So I want to say that I have from negative infinity to negative 1, because that one worked. And then union, I have 2 to 4. And we really should say that x is an element of these intervals. Now we want to look at rational inequalities. And we want to use a number line again and um, behavior at the zeros and the asymptotes. And you have to remember about the asymptotes now. Because remember, vertical asymptotes can't be included. So I'm going to factor all these things. Remember, factoring the top and then setting it equal to 0 will give me my x-intercept. So x is equal to negative 3 is a 0. And then I have x minus 2, so x is going to be equal to 2, and that one's going to be a vertical asymptote. So on my number line here, I have negative 3 and I have 2. My inequality says less than or equal to, so that means I can include my 0. So it might be, in fact, I'll change my color here. It might be this direction, but it might be this direction. But you never can include vertical asymptotes, so I have to have a parenthesis there on either side of it because it, it will never be 2. It will get close, never be there. So then we need to look and see what the values are again, just like we did with the other one. And I'm going to come and move over to y3 because I happen to have put this one in my calculator so I could watch my values a little quicker. And I want to choose like negative 4. Um, if you think about these, these were all going to be degree 1. So everything's going to change sign on either side of these. So that helps us out. So at negative 4, I see that I have a positive value. And then I want to choose something between negative 3 and 2. So I'll try 0. And that gives me a negative 4. So it's a negative value. And then I get the error. Notice you have an error there because that's my vertical asymptote. And then if I go below that, I'm going to have a positive again. So I try 3 and it gives me a positive value. But then we look and say we want it to be less than or equal to 0. So that's going to be in here. And use what we have on our number line, a bracket and a parenthesis. Negative 3 goes here, 2 goes here, and x is an element of that. Trying again, we're going to factor the top. And we have x that would be plus 4 and minus 2. So my zeros are going to be at negative 4 and positive 2. And if I factor the bottom down here, I could do again my synthetic division on it to get it done real quick. I factor quicker that way. 1, 5, 3, and negative 9. 6 times 1 is going to be 6. Add that, I get 9 times 1 is positive 9, and there's my 0. So I have a 0 at 1, but it's a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to be sure I put my parentheses in there right away. This is going to be x squared plus 6x plus 9. And if I go to my quadratic formula in here just to do something different, I'm going to put in my a as 1, and b as positive 6, and c as positive 9. And I find out that I have one real 0 at negative 3, which means that this is really x plus 3 quantity squared. So I have x equal negative 3, and it's not going to change here. It's not going to change sign because it's an even exponent. So where's my negative 3? It comes in here somewhere. It can't be that one either. That'll have parentheses. This is where different colors. These are my vertical asymptotes in blue, and I'll put my zeros in red. So it could be this way, but it could be this way at negative 4. It could be to the left or to the right at positive 2. And then I just have to check 
again for my values to see what's happening. We come over here and we look at the table, second graph. So I have my equation in here and it happens to be in y4 and I need to make sure that I can see everything that I, oops, I need to come over here to the x's and come over to y4. At negative 5 I can test negative 5 and I've got a negative. That's a negative here and that satisfies my inequality so I like that one. Between negative 4 and negative 3 uh, we have the error happening in here but we're going to have to go and we will have to go and check on that one in a moment. I'll come back to that one. Between negative 3 and 1 we can look at 0 and that's a positive so that one we don't want. Remember at this 0 of negative 3 we didn't change signs so if it's a positive on this side it'll be a positive on this side so that helps us. The 1 it did change so it should be a negative in here and if we check it actually we can't look between 1 and 2 again yet but we can look beyond 2 and it gives us positives and this was an odd exponent it was just a 1 just a degree 1 on that 0 so it should be a negative should change signs from positive to negative and then from negative to positive I like that interval too so we have from negative infinity up to negative 4 including negative 4 x is an element of union we have 1 but notice it's a parenthesis because that was an asymptote so parenthesis 1 comma 2 parenthesis math problem match the correct solution with the inequality when we, x, g of x is greater than 0 if we look at this we have a 0 here at negative 4 we have a 0 here that looks like maybe negative 1 half or something to that effect and then we have one again here at positive 4 and this negative 1 half would be 0.5. So negative, we want it to be greater. So we want it to be between negative 4 and negative 1 half. So it starts at negative 4 and it should include it. So it's not going to be this one. This one starts at negative 4 inclusive and it goes to negative 1 half. So far, so good. And then we also want this part which starts at 4 and goes to infinity and it includes that one. So we would say D.